بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الله حبيبي في الله this is the last درس باذن الله uh, of our series in الاصول الثلاثة and we left off in the portion of the treaties where Imam Muhammad Rahmatullah said, وَهَذَا دِينُهُ لَا خَيْرٍ إِلَّا دَلَّ أُمَّ الْأُمَّ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا شَرْ إِلَّا هَذَرَهَا مِنْهُ And he said, and this is his religion. So meaning that those pillars that we discussed and that asul, that foundation, which will be asked about in our graves, who is your Lord, who is your prophet, and what is your religion, that that forms the foundation of Islam right there. That's the asl of Islam, or the usul of Islam. And he said, there is no good except that he has guided the Muslim nation to it, meaning that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam guided the nation of Muslims to everything good. And there is no evil except that he has warned the Muslim nation against it. And whatever the Prophet wasallam warned us against, is evil and will have no benefit for us, especially in the Akhirah. The best of goodness to which he guided them to was Tawheed. The best of the things that the Prophet wasallam guided us to was a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, is pure Islamic monotheism. And the worst evil he warned them against was shirk. And the thing which is the most serious of sins that the Prophet ﷺ warned us to avoid is shirk, is polytheism. And that is worshiping, worshiping uh, others besides Allah or others in addition to Allah Azza wa Jal, when he's the only one worthy of worship. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forgive shirk if you die upon it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika li man yasha. Allah says, Verily Allah does not, uh, for, does not uh, forgive that you associate partners with him, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So you can be forgiven for other major sins. But if you die upon disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will reside in the hellfire forever. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bat. And then he mentioned, he said, Allah has sent him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to all mankind. Uh, and obeying him is mandatory for all jinn and mankind. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means, "Qul ya ayyuhan nas inni Rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an." O say, O mankind, verily I am sent to you all as the messenger of Allah, to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Meaning, the heavens and the earth, the dominion. What is created belongs to Allah. And with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected the religion. And the evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This day I perfected your religion for you completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. And the evidence of his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, alayhi salatu wasalam. This is unlike those extreme individuals who say, no, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never died. And that he, uh, you know, and so that we may ask him and supplicate to him and so forth to help us in our daily uh, matters and 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 needs, but however, this is false because as we've stated uh, before, that the that yes, the NBA and the Shahada, those people who are martyred, 
and the Salihin that they are alive in Al Barzakh, Hayat Barzakhiyah. They are living in, they are alive in Barzakh. This is a state which is after this life. And we don't know the true nature of that state in Al Barzakh. We only know that which is mensus from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. We know about the question of the graves. We know that the Shuhada and 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 the, the Nabiyin or Salihin are in Jannah. But we don't know the nature of that that life. And that life is unlike the life that we are living, the one that we live in now which we are aware of the senses and we act, uh, we understand things through our senses and so forth. The Hayat Barzakhiya is a, a life which is different than the life that we experience. So that means that that does not make it permissible for you to ask of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or to ask from Prophet Jesus Alayhi Salatu Wasallam or Moses or Ibrahim or the Sahaba or any of the righteous people, or the righteous scholars, or anyone that is deceased, because they cannot help you. And the evidence that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he died, alayhi salatu salam, is the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Allah says, Verily you, Muhammad, will die. And verily they will die. Then on the day of resurrection, you will, be, you will be disputing before your Lord, or your disputes will be settled. Our disputes will be settled. So where we differ with those extreme groups that say the Prophet is, is alive in a manner in which we should supplicate to him or ask favors from him, ask him to deliver, to deliver messages to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, all these kind of things. We will have those affairs settled on the day of judgment to see who was correct, to see who was doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted as far as their worship. Were they sharing in partners with Allah by supplicating to other than Allah and asking from other than Allah? Or were they supplicating directly to your Lord? Because no one can... Uh, can answer your du'a except Allah Azza wa Jal. And all worship and praise belongs to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people will be resurrected after death. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means, there of the earth we created you, and into it we shall return you, and from it we shall bring you out once again. After resurrection, they will be held to account, meaning mankind will be held to account in the jinn. The evidence being the saying of Allah, which means, and to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, that he may requite or test those who do evil with that which they have done. And reward those who do good with what is best. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْعَرْضِ لِيُجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيُجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالْبَعْثِ كَفَرْ And whoever denies the bath, whoever denies resurrection, has disbelieved. وَالدَّلِيلِ قُولُهُ تَعَالَى And the evidence is the statement of Allah. زَعْمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنْ لَنْ يُبْعَثُوا كُلْ بَلَى وَرَبِّي لَتُبْعَثُنَّ ثُمَّ لَتَنَبَّؤُنَّ بِمَا عَمَلْتُمْ وَذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يُسِيرٌ Allah says, which is a refutation of those people who, who deny the bath, especially those people who claim to be Muslims or so forth, because they'll, they will generally accept the Quranic arguments. Allah says, the disbelievers pretend that they will never be resurrected, say, Yes, by my Lord, you will certainly be resurrected. Then you will be informed of what you did, and that is easy for Allah. Allah has sent messengers to warn and convey glad tidings. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means messengers are bearers of good news. 
as well as of warning in order that mankind should be have no plea against Allah after the messengers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established the hujjah. He's established the proof for us to accept those signs, accept the Quran, the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shir'an. And then those ayat koniya, those things in the creation which are evidence to show us that we were not created by an explosion or it, w it was not a coming together of atoms and then they began to mutate and then over millions and billions of years they formed into human beings and then the human beings walked upright after being apes and then no it's a very simple story and it comes in the quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and created the angels and the angels were ordered to prostrate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did except that Iblis, the shaitan, refused to out of arrogance. And in fact, this is a parallel to the people that refuse to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to arrogance, that have no deen. Those people who, we're not talking about the people who worship Allah on battle. That's false, that's disbelief, and their reckoning will be with their Lord, and they will be in the hellfire if they die upon shirk and kufr. Like Ahl Kitab. But we're talking about those people who are just completely, who deny religion, who deny Allah, who don't believe in the one who created the heavens and earth at all. That those people, the hujjah has been established, but they don't accept it. They believe only in what their senses and what their intellect and what their desires lead them to, to believe. And in fact, this brings up a point, and I hate to get off uh, topic, but it reminds me today in my workplace, some atheists were actually discussing one atheist and some others. And he was talking about, he said that Saudi, he said, well, most of the world accepts this, except for Saudi, which is so, you know, he said most is a civilized world. So it showed his arrogant uh, Eurocentric view of the world as he's a European and his arrogant look at what he feels is a third world and the Arabs are so backwards and these races are so backwards, but the Europeans are so forward and so civilized. This is the language that he used out of his tongue, off his tongue. And he was discussing about that he said, here's the issue, he said that if a building was burning, I would save my pet before I would save a stranger meaning that the dog has more sanctity than a human life, which totally goes against Islam. No matter how much you love and respect your pets, but is a, an animal ever equal to that of a human being? But this shows where Ahl al-Kufr, wa Zandaka, wa Ilhad, how their aql leads them to batin, Falsehood on falsehood. That this man was actually arrogant and considered it uncivilized. He said most of the civilized world, meaning the West, accepts this. But also, how civil is that? When you can marry, and look this up for yourself, you can marry, and I believe it's in Germany, it's in several European states, you can marry an animal. And I'm not making this up. I looked it up myself. Look up the codes, the civil uh, codes, possibly in the UK. I'm not even sure. They don't consider bestiality as a crime, but in fact, they allow that a human and an animal can cohabitate and marry and be in the sacred marriage bond. Is that civilization? The first of all the messengers was Nuh, and the final message was Muhammad, with whom Allah sealed all messages messengers and prophets, the evidence that Nuh والسلام, was the first messenger is the saying of Allah, which means verily we have sent the revelation to you, Muhammad, as we sent the revelation to Nuh and the prophets after him. Every nation to whom Allah sent messengers from the time of Nuh والسلام, until Muhammad والسلام, was commanded to worship Allah alone. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means and verily we sent to every uh, nation a messenger proclaiming worship Allah alone and avoid 
the Tagut, those things, those false deities besides Allah. Allah commanded all people to disbelieve in Tagut and to believe in Allah alone. Tagut are many, but the main heads are five. Satan, anyone who accepts being worshipped besides Allah. So these are two. Satan, for one, Iblis. The second, anyone who accepts being worshipped besides Allah. The third, anyone who calls people to worship other than Allah, a da'i to shirk. Anyone who claims the knowledge of anything from the unknown, they are also a ta'gut. And anyone who seeks judgment from other than Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those people who rule by other than what Allah revealed with all the tafsil that pertains to that issue. That doesn't mean everyone who makes a mistake in judgment or everybody who judges with, uh, in accordance with their desires, even though they believe the sharia is the haq. That's, they do not follow under that as Tagut and as far as being kufr outside the fold of Islam, but in fact they've fallen into a type of kufr, the lesser type of kufr. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means, and verily we have sent among every nation a messenger, uh, worship, or proclaim and worship Allah and avoid Tagut, as we mentioned the ayat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept all of our good and bless us all. And bless us all to be a source of guidance. And I advise my, uh, those people who listen to these lectures to go and look at some of the other explanations. Listen to some of the other du'at and students of knowledge from Ahlul Sunnah uh, in their explanations of this book if they want to go further and get a much more detailed and beneficial explanation. This explanation was meant to be concise and to give people an introduction of this book, al Sulu Tharatha. And there are so many explanations from the ulama that are even translated into English. So I advise the brothers and sisters to go and benefit from those translations and benefit from the ulama and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah and guide them and bless them with ikhlas with the bat. And may Allah bless the Muslims in general everywhere, forgive them, guide them, have mercy upon them and save them from the hellfire and their families. And may Allah guide mankind to that which is correct to follow the messengers alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many, many shortcomings and bless us with ikhlas with the bat. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us to not have any more turmoil and fitna throughout the world and to have peace and stability and base this dunya on kitab ila wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam